We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading for today is from uh, the Gospel reading for Sunday. And that is from Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they did not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves. They have all been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone who you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man who had, was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Here is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hans Christian Andersen wrote the tale, The Emperor's New Clothes. I am certain you are familiar with the story. The Emperor is vain and spends lavishly on clothing for himself at the expense of the, the state. Swindlers come to town and convince him that they make clothing that is invisible to the stupid and the incompetent. The emperor hires them and soon proudly parades through the city in his new clothes. And at some point, the child blurts out the obvious. The emperor has no clothes. The emperor walks on as proud as before. And that child's exclamation has been, become shorthand for the moment when the truth is finally realized and spoken out loud. The exclamation, the emperor has no clothes, came to mind after reflecting on Jesus' parable. Not only is a man in the parable missing an appropriate and necessary garment, but the whole parable is an unsettling moment of truth-telling. And the question becomes, will the leaders confronting Jesus hear what he has to say and change, or will they continue to walk proudly by? The parable of the wedding banquet is the third teaching story Jesus gives to the chief priests and elders of the people. They are all in the temple, this is Holy Week. Jesus was instructing those following him when he was confronted by the chief priests and elders. 
And their initial question, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Led the three parables from Jesus. And it becomes increasingly clear that Jesus not only has authority, but it's given this authority by our Heavenly Father. When Jesus says the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a banquet, he uses an image that appears regularly in the Old Testament. We have two such images in the lessons from Isaiah and Psalm 23. Isaiah proclaims, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast. And then in the beloved Psalm 23, the Good Shepherd prepares a table for us, and our cup overflows, even in the presence of enemies. The Kingdom of Heaven is a place and a condition where there is the freedom to feast. There is the freedom to delight in the abundance of God's good gifts. God promises us the freedom to enjoy creature comforts and a time to visit and dance and laugh and celebrate life. And what better place can there be to celebrate life than at a wedding? As the chief priests and elders quickly discerned, Jesus was telling them that he is the Son. His heavenly Father is the King. And they are the ones who have dishonored the Father and the Son by refusing to have faith in Jesus as God's own Son, announcing to them that he is God's Son and that they are dishonoring him is the first instance of truth-telling, and that alone is jarring enough. A second instance of truth-telling is that they will be punished for the way that they treat the Son, and that for punishment comes in two phases. First is the violence and destruction of Jerusalem, and the punishment continues with the acknowledgement that they can and will be replaced. The wedding banquet is going to happen. If one group of invitees doesn't work out, then God reaches out to another. God will have his party. A third instance of truth-telling is that there is no other way into the kingdom of heaven except through the Son. Then there is that party stopping moment when the man without a wedding garment appears. The man has no wedding robe. We can just imagine a child burning it out. Well, what exactly does the wedding robe symbolize? Commentators suggest everything from baptism to holiness, good works, the righteousness of Christ, and faith. And all of these have merit and are worthy of considerable consideration. But the more important question is, what does it mean to lack a wedding robe? First, it means that you dishonor and shame the Son. Dishonor and shame to the Son means that you do the same to the Father. And second, it means that you are willing to do what the chief priests, elders, Judas, and the Pharisees, and other religious leaders do. They move beyond dishonor and shame to actively oppose hate and seek to destroy God's Son. I have never been to a wedding party where someone starts saying ugly things or about the bride and groom or the family or out of spite tries to wreck the party because of their hatred for the bridegroom or the family. But if that were to happen, I am certain that security or the police would be called and the troublemakers thrown out and charges pressed. Why wouldn't God do the same thing? If someone dishonors, shames, and actively opposes the Son of God, the gift that God the Father is giving to the world, 
Why would God want someone like that at this celebration? Grace is extended to everyone in all times and places. God calls all people to look upon Jesus and his cross and to have faith in him and to worship him. But if people are not willing to receive Jesus, the Son, for who he is, then why should they or anyone else expect to be at that great party? It's clear to me that the chief priests and the elders understood what Jesus was saying through these short stories. Our lesson ends at verse 14. Verse 15 says this, Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. Despite the warning, they chose to oppose the Son and to continue to walk proudly by. We rejoice that we are not making a similar mistake. We welcome the invitation to come to God's wedding banquet. We honor the Son. We give thanks to the Father. And we live in hope for the future through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join with me in a few words of prayer. O oh God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery, and by the effectual working of your perpetual providence, carry out the work of our salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, that things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by your Son, through whom all things were made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most loving Father, whose will it is for us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing but the loss of you, and to cast all of our care on you who care for us. Preserve us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, that no clouds of this mortal life may hide from the light of that love which is immortal, and which you have manifested to us in your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you set the solitary in families. We commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. Put far from them, we pray, every root of bitterness, the thirst for personal gain, and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, moderation, patience, and godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who have been joined in marriage. Let children and parents have proper regard for one another and kindle fervent love among us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant every blessing to Ruth Coymans, Mary Rose, Sue Schlees, Marcia Benson, and Ashley Shepley, as they celebrate their birthdays this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant comfort and healing to all those who suffer. Give them and their caregivers faith, hope, and love. And today we pray for Lorena, Eva, Ken, Carolyn, Bob, Pastor Snyder, Jim, Nancy, Carol, Millie, Jim, Doris, Carol, Dorothy, Maureen, Erica, Mike, Linda, Thelma, Jean, Lois, Eric, Nathan, Mabel, 
Dennis, Janet, Ruby, and Reed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord God, you hold all souls in life. Give to your whole church in paradise and on earth your light and your peace. And grant that we, following the good examples of those who served you here and are now at rest, may at last enter with them into your unending joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you gave your only Son to die for our sins and to rise for our justification. Give us grace so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.